What's going on guys, Brandon here, Legacy Group Real Estate Team. We have our Q&A we're doing it a day early today, we're doing market updates tomorrow for October. So let's jump right into this. The question that we get a fair amount of time is, hey, you know, hey Brandon, um, you know, hey team, what is it when we were going to sell our home, what are the things that come up a lot of times in inspection? As a home seller, what are you looking for to try to you know, make sure that things are in order before you get into uh, an accepted offer, you know, a pending deal, and then get into the inspection? Uh, and I outlined a few things here, um, you know, and this encompasses, you know, there might be a thing or two that uh, show up as, as well, possibly from time to time, obviously. But these are some of the biggest things that we see a lot of times. Uh, and again, like things like mold, this is something that, again, Michigan is kind of what happens. And, it, you know, it leads to or it's from a lot of times venting in an attic. Uh, we just we see it a lot here in Michigan. Um, homeowners, for whatever reason, in the you know, 60s and 70s, when many, many homes were built, uh, we just we had venting. People vented their bathrooms into the attic for some reason, and the condensation builds up, and then mold happens. So we see venting into the attic, and then it creates mold a lot of times. And, and again, just the the climate we live in, we see mold. Um, you know, not every house, obviously, but there's a good chunk of homes that see those issues come up. So these are again things that you know most common home seller problems that you see in an inspection period, uh, in, in an inspection. So. Again, just wanted to get that out there for you. That way you were ready and prepared for what was gonna happen or potentially happen to your home. And more or less, I want you to know that so that you can check on these things before you even get to that point. Uh, GFCI, GFCI outlets, ground fault circuit interrupter, that, though, those are the outlets that have the, the reset button on them, the red and black reset buttons. Those have to be within, it's, I think it's about three feet of any water source. So we see a lot of times, those, you know, it's code now, it wasn't built like that before. Uh, people had, you know, just regular outlets next to their sink, next to their, their washer, their, their kitchen sink, whatever it may be, and you have to have GFCI outlets now close to those water sources. So we see that flagged a lot. Um, and I, obviously we talked about the attic and the mold. Uh, downspouts, this is a, a very simple thing, but you'd be incredibly surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be surprised how many people don't have their downspouts on their house hooked up to their gutters and they're just water pouring into the side of the house and people wonder why they have water problems in their basement. Uh, they have you know mold in their basement, they've got water problems in their basement, they develop cracks in the you know, foundation, whatever it may be, it's because a lot of times the downspouts, you know, sometimes it might be grading and that does need to get fixed from time to time, those come up, but downspouts, that is a huge reason. We see it a lot and water is just draining right into the side of the home and it's seeping down into the home. So a big, big one, an easy one, just do a simple walk around your home once a week, once every two weeks to make sure the downspouts aren't off the home and they are hooked up. Sump pump, we see this one a lot. For So for those of you that have sump pumps, um, that's getting the excess water. If there's ever a flood in the, in the basement or anything like that and getting that water out of your basement and draining that out. This, a lot of times, the sump pump is broken or just inoperative a lot of times. People don't know because fortunately they don't have to use it ever. So when it does go to an inspection and people are looking at it, that's not operational a lot of times and that comes up in an inspection report. Um, and then we get to like cracked concrete. We see that a lot when you have an FHA or VA offer and things like that. That gets flagged a lot of times in those offers. You know, foundational cracks, sidewalk cracks, driveway cracks if you're tripping hazards, things like that. We also see um, FHA and VA, we see you know, a lot of handrails um, not being on uh, either the steps outside of a home or on stairways or decks that were built and not having proper handrails. Um, and then having uh, you know, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide tech detectors, um, that's a big one too, they flag a lot. So these are things that you'd be you'd be really surprised that a lot of people don't have those in their home. They're not operational. Again, those things get flagged a lot. Very common things. Fortunately, as you can see here, these really aren't big things. Obviously, if you have a cracked foundation and you have really bad you know, heaving or problems like that, that could be a major problem, obviously. But basically, everything else is fairly minute. Um, you, you really don't have too, too many issues. You know, Again, things that can come up, ACs and furnaces and all those things that might not work, but generally those things work because people usually use them somewhat consistently. All these other things don't necessarily affect your everyday life. So those are the things that just kind of slip by. They have a tendency to show up in inspection reports 
and you just, you just don't have to deal with them in everyday life usually. So they just you know go by, they, they pass your radar and you just don't notice. And then all of a sudden you're selling a home and inspection comes back and you've got you know four things you need to fix and you're freaking out. Not in the world, these aren't huge fixes. You know, the, the time and the money cost is not that big for all these things. It's just being prepared and creating a seamless process. That way you can get your home with as little, you get your home sold with as little stress as possible. So uh, I hope that, uh, you know, gives you some indication as to what to look for going into an inspection. Hopefully it does, because this is some of the stuff that we see uh, on so many inspection reports. When, when sellers uh, get a report back, they're blown away a lot of times. They're like, wow, what the heck? And it's, it's really not the end of the world, just things to be aware of and to prep for going into inspection. Hopefully clear a lot of these things up. That way the buyers aren't freaked out, they're not getting cold feet, and you're not freaked out and stressed out. So. Uh, let me know what you guys think or anything else that, uh, that you might have a question or a comment or concern about. I appreciate you guys watching these videos so much. It means the world to us and uh, your time and your attention because it's the most important thing we have. So appreciate you all and we'll see you soon.